Thank you everyone for joining today's webinar. My name is Todd and I'm the CEO at Broadloom. And today I'm joined by a special guest, Brian Elias from Refloor. How you doing, Brian? Best day ever. I, I can appreciate that sentiment. Uh, and today we're talking about financing. I know you are one of the kings of financing and we have a lot of retailers talking about how they can make, you know, we've questions about how they can make more money, close more deals. And a lot of people just don't know much about financing. So we're going to use this time to kind of pick your brain. But before we begin, can you give the audience a little background on yourself? Yeah, I started off in the window siding and roofing business. I built up uh, about an $80 million home improvement company, sold out to a private equity firm, basically retired. Um, when I sold the company, um, I had to replace myself and as a CEO. And I hired a guy who used to work at Empire, who was the former CEO of Empire. And he took it from $60 million to, I'm guessing, $600 million. So he built it up quite big. And he basically said to me, hey, Brian, you know, you should do flooring. It doesn't violate your non-competes. And uh, you could take some of the things you learned from windows and siding and bring it into the flooring industry. And I said, you know, something I think I'm going to do just that. So I went to work. I started two and a half years ago. Last year, we ended the year at $32.1 million. So pretty sizable growth, pretty fast. Um, all in home sales. Uh, I've seen some beautiful stores out there in some of the different markets, and a lot of them have multiple stores and things like that. I've never owned a retail store, so there's a lot of guys out there who have serious leg up on me. I'm more of a marketing machine, and that's what we do every single day. And you're lucky enough also to work with your son, right? I work with. I actually work for my son legally. There you so go. So I, I, I'm at the stage in my life where. Um, I want to be a part of his business that he's building. So I actually legally work for him, although I am the CEO of the company today. Awesome. And um, I, I want to dive into more of that, but I know the audience is really interested in financing. Listen, we get a lot of questions about financing. The market is changing, right? The economic market is changing. People are a lot less liquid and a lot more nervous to give money up front. I I'm curious, I guess, two things that will start. Um, how did you, how are you using financing today and has that changed in the last 12 months versus two years ago, or even at your previous company with the kind of economic climate? Well, I've in my previous business and today we use financing and we present financing with every price that we give out, no matter what happens, it's simply part of our process. Uh, my company, you'll you'll learn over time, and if they if people didn't have a chance to hear me speak before, um, the whole thing that we do is we follow our process every single day. So if we present an offer to a customer, we're also presenting the payment. So if the if the order was ten thousand dollars, I know that's one hundred and thirty two dollars a month. So I'd much rather present one hundred and thirty two dollars a month, not present. Um, the $10,000. So we bring it up. That'll be $10,000. Most people finance. That's $132 a month. So on and we every never single do, order? Every single order we present financed, no hmm. matter what happens. Hmm. And what percent of people, and, and listen, we, we've launched Broadloom Financing. We have some retailers using it, but I'm not sure they know how to use financing well, like as part of the strategy. So role play with me here for a second. So I, you come into my home. I'm like, this is amazing. I'm going to buy this LVP because it looks so beautiful. And you say, Mrs. Jones, it's $10,000 or $132 a month. Which one do you want? Or like, talk to me about your, your, the process once you're in the home. So we can install. So it sounds something like this. Okay. First of all, let me give you a little backdrop about half of our customers or better finance. And we don't know which ones have money and which ones don't because customers aren't going to come right out and tell you, by the way, I have no money in my bank account. But I do know right now that 95% of the country to this day cannot come up with $10,000 in cash if they had to right now. Yep. So that tells you that the majority of the people don't have the money. That doesn't mean they don't have a credit card. That doesn't mean they don't have a home equity loan, but they don't have the cash. 
So I want to eliminate that uncomfortable position. So every time we present the price, it'll be, we can do your entire job, Ms. Uh, Mr. Saunders. Okay. Is it Sanders or Saunders? Saunders. Saunders. Okay. We can do your jo job, Mr. Saunders, for $10,000, and that's $132 a month because most of our customers do finance. Gotcha. So we let them know the majority is financed. Yep. So the majority so, is financing, but so you offer ten thousand dollars. Do you say or, or do you immediately say that's one hundred thirty-two dollars a month? We immediately say it's one hundred thirty-two dollars a month. Interesting. Uh, so you don't even give them the choice. We never. We, well, wait, let me tell you what not to do. That might even be better. Don't ever say. Mr. Saunders, do you need financing? So you present, you present two options. You present one option, not two options. You were saying you never say, um, never say, do you want to finance it? Why not? Right, and and the customer will come back. We always give them the option of the lower payment. Okay, you can have two years, zero interest. Okay, which is what a lot of the people are doing, or one year no payments, no interest, or whatever it may be. Those options are great options, but a lot of people for that $10,000 think to themselves, well, how am I going to afford $10,000 after one year? I'm never going to have that money. That doesn't work for me. So it's our job as, as the people who run the business is to make it easy for the customer to buy. And I think a lot of retailers don't realize that. They think, oh, the customer's not going to want to pay interest. I have to enlighten you. The customer wants to have the goods that they that they came to your store for. And if you don't make it easier for them to buy, okay, watch out, okay? They're going to end up going somewhere else and buy from your competitor. People are like, why did they buy from Empire? I had a great rapport because Empire offered the financing. Yep. So that would be my advice to everybody is make it easy for them to buy. Yeah. And that's that's what we do every day. And it's about presenting it in the right way. So you you present it right away and you saying, what percent of your customers take the financing? More than half every day. More than half. And um, uh, we talk about this a lot internally. Do you think that allows you to have, I, I assume it allows you to close more deals because more sales, because some people that didn't have financing, didn't think financing was available, now have financing. Um, but how about the ticket size? I assume the ticket size is also higher. It raises the average ticket, period. My average ticket is much higher than the normal retailer because I allow that customer to do more work. They can afford more at $132. So at $10,000 at $132 a month, that gives a lot of runway for that consumer. So am I allowed to ask you what your average ticket size is? You can ask. It's about $7,000. Okay. Um Okay. Yeah. No, that, that makes sense. And I don't, I don't know. I don't know that how that compares with everybody I, else. I have no idea. Hey, I will get some feedback from this and I guess we'll, uh, we'll find out afterwards. So uh, now with your financing, the financing is done in the home right then, right there. And they're approved right then, right there. Are they funded right then, right there? Or let's keep going down this process. So you basically for us is they, they get the loan. We do the project for the customer they sign a completion certificate and I get paid. It's that easy. Happens that that hour, that minute, or does it take 24 hours? It takes 24 hours, but uh, you know, we make sure I don't I, I make sure that I always have cash flow. So I never have to worry about if it takes an extra day to get my money. I I always leave cushion in my businesses and I never rob the goose that lays the golden egg. So I don't pull all the money out first. Yep. You know, it's just Business 101 for me is make sure you have the money to do whatever you need to do. That is definitely 101. And this is partially why, I mean, <laughs> listen, a lot of our retailers are afraid to use financing, afraid to ask the question, which is why we launched it. But now it's seeming like, which is why we launched Broadloom Financing. But what it seems like here is it's less about having the tool, although there's a lot of different tools, you have to have the right tool, but it's how do you use that tool, right? How do you leverage that tool? What strategy do you, and do you market? financing or what do you do like uh, outwardly 100 percent, i market the financing easy payments low monthly payments zero interest programs whatever i can think of i want to put out on the streets so 
give the customer a reason to buy. You know, most of the people who need a floor have needed a floor for a very long time and did nothing about it because they didn't find the right path to get them there. Yep. So if we can show them a path to get them from point A to point B that's palatable for them, that they can accept, that's what we do every day. And it's like leasing a car. I mean, you can lease a car. You walk in the dealership, you pay them first and last month, and you're driving away in a car. And that's affordable. You have to do the same thing with a floor. So what do you think the big mistakes retailers are doing today that aren't doing financing well because we hear a lot of times like oh financing doesn't work for me like what do you think they're doing wrong if you had to guess they're a they're not presenting it right they're not going under the assumption that the customer is going to take it we have to let our we want the customer to say no 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 i'm not financing i'm paying cash great we take cash but we want them to reject the financing so by presenting it, we have a much higher chance of closing that deal than without it. In fact, it would make me nervous. They, if somebody took my financing away for a day, I would have anxiety from not having it because it's that powerful to get business. We close the majority of what we sit with every day. So if we go on a lead, we're gonna, we have a better than 50% chance of earning that person's business. And that's because of financing. And are you doing more? I mean, we're going back to your previous business or even a year ago when you were in the flooring industry, but how about the economy now versus before? I mean, are you doing more financing now than, you know, the last five or 10 years? Again, it's proportional because you were in different businesses, but how how is the economy changing how you view financing? The economy does affect financing because people were using their house like an ATM machine. And they were using home equity loans and things like that. And that's how they paid for the flooring. Now, today, they're not able to do that so readily because the interest rates are higher. But you're able to do with easy financing, like a signature loan, people can afford to get that work done on their house now. And so that's why you got to deviate from it. You got to make it part of your business. Otherwise, you're going to be out of business. Yep. And, and you don't want the customer. And, and it, I liked what you said at the beginning. And I like kind of your whole strategy of how you present it, because you're right. You don't want the customer. You don't want to ask them if they want to use financing because it's almost an awkward question. And you almost don't want to say yes as the consumer. But when it's or ask for it. Right. It just feels. I don't know. I, I, it makes it, you feel. Weird. I don't know. It may, it makes the customer feel weird because. They, that's that's almost them coming to tell you their personal story. Well, gee, I don't have $10,000 in the bank to pay for this floor. And then they're embarrassed. They're uncomfortable. They don't want to face you. So I want to change the tone of the conversation to say, this is how everybody does it. Everybody finances their flooring. This is the norm. So they're never uncomfortable during our, you know, during that conversation. It's going to be $10,000. Most people finance. That's $132 a month. Yep. Is and that if, something you can go? Yeah. And even if you don't have the money, like it's mentally giving you $132 a month is way better than me giving you $10,000. And listen, even some people think they can get a better return on that money than the interest rate. So they'd rather have the cash and invest it or, you know, do something. Um, yeah. You know, so a lot of times it might not even be about having the money or not having the money. It might just be about, it feels it's, it, you know, when you say $132 a month for me, that seems way more palatable regardless if I had the money or not versus, oh, you want $10,000? Ooh, I don't know about that. Right, right. And then if they say, well, I want a zero interest program, I just go, okay, we can give do one year, same as cash. No problem. Whichever way you want to go, whatever works for you. So we're there making it easy for the customer to buy. And I think that's where a lot of retailers forget about that. They think, oh, this is what they want. What they really want is they want an easy buying experience. You know, the majority of the customers, if you think about it, would the majority of the customers be driving as nice of a car as they have right now if they had to pay cash or put it on their credit card? Yeah, no way. No way. And that's what retailers forget. And I'm, I'm hoping that I, I can remind them how important it is to sell the financing. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, how many consumers are buying that, you know, BMW uh, and they're like, yeah, $70,000. Here you go. Cash up front. They're not just paying a monthly bill every single month. I don't know. Not many. Correct. No, not, not many people I know. Yeah. So I, 
understand what my job is, and my job is to be a facilitator, okay, between the product, the price, and the financing. And I never lose sight of that. Yeah. And you, you, I know you're all about process. We talked about the process of, you know, you really just have a process and flooring is a, a widget of that process and financing is part of it. I'd be reminisced to ask, because I am getting some people asking on your board, it says process over people, which is like, I'm going to say it's not controversial, but controversial is not the right word, but it's, um, articulately controversial or like accurately controversial? I don't know. I'm looking for the right word, but I am curious when you think process over people, what does that mean to you? Just because it's on your board, I figured I might as well ask right behind you. I, I don't even know what it's on, but I'm going to explain it to you. I, I don't know where I have it, but it is true how I think. Oh, so. It's right behind your right shoulder. Oh, oh yes. Okay. Process over people. If we follow the same process every single day, and the process is easy enough, anybody could do it, we can change out people when necessary. We love our people, but if we have good processes, we should be able to put somebody else in that position. My favorite company in the whole world is McDonald's because no matter where you go, that hamburger tastes exactly the same. The French fries taste exactly the same. And they follow a process every single day that's second to none. So they can get kids in there and still produce billions of dollars in sales. That's how I think of businesses. I want to make sure that my processes are so easy that anybody can do them. There's not a person out there that couldn't go, that's $10,000 or $132 a month. Which way are you leaning towards paying for it? Yep. Well, do you find it, it all also yeah. close? How about the, I mean, like that math is super easy, but I assume sometimes the sales associate is afraid to do the math or think about it, or it just kind of trips them up. Whenever they're about to give a price, they need to figure out the payment at the same time they figure out the price. And what'll happen is they'll memorize the payments between five and $10,000. So they have a pretty good idea what it's going to be at each one of those. Some of my staff use like a little rate card. I just figure it out. Yeah. I know, you know, I know what it is. And when I present a price, there's never a time it's got the price on one part of the sheet and then it says payment right next to it. So there's no possible way it's missed. Yeah. And, and I, this is deviating a little outside of of uh, financing, but how do you guys, because this is a, a, a kind of tangential conversation. Uh, so we launched Broadloom Financing because we heard people didn't have the instrument to do financing. But the biggest thing we heard was, we don't have the ability to collect payment on our website, collect credit card or ACH. And that blew my mind because to be honest with you, I owe my dentist money because I have to write a check and I, I, I get pains me. I have to go figure out where a check is. And then I have to like write one. I have to like mail it to him or something. I don't know. So tangentially towards this process and towards financing, how do you guys kind of at the end of this handle payments? Well, we have it set up similar to what you guys do. We we had, before I met you, Todd, I told you this before, some of the things I spent literally seven digits on, over a million dollars building our infrastructure, I put that all part of our app. And if had I met you sooner, I wouldn't have had to spend that money. And I've told you, to sure. you this before, okay? You want to have everything easy for that customer. We have it on our app where they can run the credit card. It goes through our fees are comparable to yours. Yep. Um, but there's no reason to build what I built. Okay, none whatsoever. I just didn't think it was out there when I first opened up. So I wrote the check to do it. I recommend your payment processing. I did hear about it. I did listen to you at the uh, Rodham sure. Convention and at Florcon. And I was blown away. Um, that there wasn't a line of people to go grab this because it makes perfect sense. Yeah, we we had a, a ton of people and I do appreciate you you being at FloorCon. And, and that's the last question I'll leave you with, with here today. You came to FloorCon and this is deviating a little outside financing, but you came to FloorCon, Bye. you heard a bunch, of, a bunch of stuff and you were one of the highest rated speakers, either number one or two next to Andrew Yang. So like, you know, pretty good company. Um, it was your first... FloorCon, what was your honest, immediate reaction to that? Because it's different, right? It's not a flooring convention. It's it's a little bit of this, a little bit of that, a little bit of excitement of the industry, a little bit of, you know, getting people back excited about what they do. But I, I'm curious, you've been to a lot of conventions. 
What did you think of Floricon? Honestly. I, honestly, I thought you did an ingenious job putting this together because you didn't put your business in the front. You put your customer's business at the front. So everything that I listened to was about growing your business and taking your business from where you're at now. And if you were stuck, getting unstuck. And all of those things that I listened to were brilliant. And I know that, you know, I presented things up there that people have never even heard of. But that being said, I would tell anybody to go to Floricon any day. I loved listening. I love listening to Andrew Yang. He was phenomenal. And I also like listening to you because you're there representing the dealer. And you're, you've learned what their obstacles are. Okay. And you're there to move the needle for them. And I've never seen an organization step up the way you have. And I love that. I love what you're doing. I, I appreciate that. And I actually, you know, it's it's funny just talking about Floricon is, you know, we we say it like it is and we have no predisposition. We have no, um, you know, we're not part of this whole political part of things we can and cannot say. When you have one mission, it makes it really easy. Our mission is to help every retailer reach their fullest potential and make as much money as possible. And if we think there's an opportunity to do that, then we're going to try something and hope it works for the retailer. And if not, we'll pull it back. But when you have one mission and one customer, like it's really easy because you know if it's working or not working. So, you know, Broadloom Payments, Broadloom Financing, Floorcon, all that is part of it. And it, it's funny, if people would just listen and start spending their time just implementing something new every week, make a list of your things, prioritize your list and start executing on what you know needs to be done in your business, watch out. If I can do it, I, I barely graduated high school. And th that's the truth. I'm self-taught. I read hundreds and hundreds of books to learn to get to the level I'm at now. And I would tell you that if if anybody out there is listening and you want to change your life, team up with Broadloom, because some of the things that I had to build, okay, you already built. And any questions anybody has, they know that they can reach out to me because I love raising the industry. It, it helps me when somebody doesn't go in and give away a job. Because yeah. if you're giving away the jobs, okay, you're making it hard for everybody else. You have to be profitable. And that's the whole idea behind this business. Oh, I can't, you know, the customer asked for this or this, you know, you hear all this nonsense. And really what it comes down to is you have a product and a service that you're selling to people. You have to put your margin in there to make sure you're taking care of your own bottom line. And that's what Broadloom helps assist with every day. Yeah. And there's actually someone asked, and I know, I know the answer to this, but I'll ask you, you said you, you read a lot of books. What are, I know your two favorite books, but I'll let you, what are, what are two books that um, you highly recommend? Number one, read the email. After you're done reading it, read it again because you missed something. Okay. Next book you want to read is a book called Traction. And that's the way of organizing your business for growth. Puts all your KPIs in place, all your people, your processes, your values. Uh, you have to have all of those things very clear. My mission is like yours, Todd. My mission is to build the largest flooring company in America, period. No ifs, ands, ors, or buts. And I'm going to get that. And Empire, watch out. I mean, I'm coming after you. And they know I'm coming. Yeah. All right. Well, thank you so much for joining us today, Brian. I know um, now a lot more about financing. I think the big takeaways for me are don't make it an either or. Just you know, give the options right up front and, and try to push financing first, number one. Number two, uh, over 50% of people use financing. So don't forget that. And number three, right, is have have a good time and always appreciate the day. And that's something you always you always uh, preach. Uh, are you open if retailers want to reach out to you and talk? Uh, how can they reach out to you? Absolutely. My email is bealias at reeflor.com. Don't hesitate to reach out. I'm also on LinkedIn. Uh, a lot of people follow me on Facebook. You're welcome to follow me there. And my cell number is area code 248. 866-2000. You're welcome to give me a call or send me a text. Um, I'm here to make a difference in your life. Um, I'm already successful and I'm a firm believer that competi competition is good for everybody. A rising tide raises all boats. 
I would like to see everybody who ever watches this uh, podcast uh, become, some, become enormously successful. Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Brian. Pleasure is mine.